Our first speaker tonight comes from a land far, far away. <laughs> the other side of the Great Divide in Baltimore City. Uh, County Executive David Craig brings some vast experience in both municipal and state government to his office of County Executive. He's been a member of the Haverford Gray City Council, was elected as the city's mayor, and then he stepped up at the state level when he was elected as a state delegate, and then eventually he became a state senator. Now as the county executive, he has, recently, he has been elected as the president of the, Maryland, president of the Maryland Municipal League, and last year he served as president of the Maryland Association of Counties. And he is the first elected official to serve as president of both organizations. He is committed to education. He spent 34 years in Hartford County Public School System as a teacher and assistant principal. He understands the connection between education and individual success. But simultaneously, he also promotes his native Harford County's agricultural heritage. Harford County ranks as the 10th most successful for land preservation in the entire country. Beyond all those accomplishments, Mr. Craig knows that taxpayers expect him to commit to success, resourceful stewardship of their tax dollars. He truly is a Republican. He has directed his administration to look for ways to reduce costs while still offering effective services to Harford County residents. Over the last four years, this administration reduced the county budget by 22%, something you'd like to see here in Howard County. He twice lowered the property tax rate, and he twice redu reduced the property tax, tax cap to 5%. In 2011, the budget is 5% smaller than it was in 2010, yet it is a budget that maintains the, the county services that they had in 2010. And his aim is to get the county's tax rate to under $1. At a time when other Maryland counties worry about solvency, Harford County maintains a solid balance sheet that's demonstrated by its upgrade to a AAA bond rating by two of the top rating agencies in the country. We would truly like to welcome Mr. Craig tonight, who's going to give us a glimpse of how he's made this happen. Through a strong local economy and sound money management, he has been able to bring a bright future to Harford County. We'd like to bring a little brightness here to Howard. Thank you. situation, um, and then we'll do some uh, Q&A afterwards, and I don't want to impose too much on Alan Kittles this time. Alan's dad, Bob Kittleman, was the deputy uh, leader when I was a member of the House of Delegates, and uh, helped me get elected in 1990. Uh, it's hard to believe that was 21 years ago, but uh, I really appreciate that. And Trent, I saw Trent saw and Trent worked with her when she was with the Department of Transportation. I'll just give you a couple, we'll start talking first about the in what the state is going to do to your county government and secretly screw you so that uh, they, they make it seem like your county government's doing it. Um, Jeff mentioned some of the things we've done. I've lowered the tax rate twice in the last three years. I've lowered the tax cap twice in the last two years. Um, we've lowered the amount of money we bring in. Property tax uh, revenues uh, are lower, much lower. Uh, what I can say is that's a bad mark for the state as far as they consider. Every time I do something like that, Mike Miller and Mike Bush and the governor get mad. Uh, I do volunteer to go down and help them figure out how to do it. <laughs> uh, but I'll just tell you that I could have, when, when they mentioned that I want to lower my, our tax rate was 108, it's 104, I want to get it to under a dollar. We don't, I know sometimes that the, the counties hide certain parts of their tax rates that they don't put in there. We also don't have as many taxes as everybody else. We don't have a utilities tax in Harper County. We don't have a parking tax. We don't have a hotel tax. Um, we don't have a lot of the other taxes that other counties use to keep their property taxes low um, or make them seem lower. Um, but there are other things that the state has done in the last three or four years that have affected our budget, affected your budget, Howard County, and kept our county tax rate. If they pass the teacher pension to us and use that to balance the state budget, it's going to cost us up to $38 million. And again, that's 30 cents, oh, 27 cents on our tax rate. So that's huge for us. Um, if they only do part, they, they're talking about only doing part of it, but uh, eventually all of it will be shifted. And then they'll make the claim that they balance the money, which they really haven't done. All right, how did we do it? Um, I can tell you that in 2008, in September of 2008, when we first started hearing about the, the crash of the stock market and places like Enron and all that melting, I have a 
really good treasurer, really good budget office. The budget office is as close to my office as anyone. I'm in the budget office every day. And those people were coming in. I always tell us bad news when they come to see me. Uh, Mr. Kilman might find us out if he becomes your county executive. When they come up with bad news, they knock on the door and then they back up. They don't really want to walk in and tell you the bad news. And the bad news was pretty bad. We were losing $13.5 million that year in that year's budget. So we modified our budget that month. We cut our budget by $13 million immediately, which meant that at the end of the year, we didn't have all the problems that all my colleagues had at the state level. Or I remember talking to Jim Smith later on the next year, and he goes, well, when are you going to cut this? I said, I cut that last year. <laughs> um, you got to be on board of that. But some of the changes we made, we, we changed our health care uh, benefits for employees. We changed our health care benefits for retirees, new retirees. If you were retired, you still, we grandfathered you in, you still got that right. Uh, we changed uh, some other pension benefits. We did a, a, an analysis, and here's another thing that's typical of uh, county government, at least for us, maybe other counties. We found that Harper County was the choice of the people who had worked all their life somewhere else, and they knew if they came and worked at Harper <coughs> County for five years, they'd get a full pension and full health care benefits, and that was costing a lot of money. So we changed that rule and said, you got to work there 20 years. And we told the people that were in that 5 to 20 year range, you can leave now. Um, but that's what they were doing. I mean, they were, you know, it was costing us a lot of money. So we changed that. We did a hiring freeze, a true hiring freeze, where we analyzed every vacant position and decided whether we needed to get rid of it, whether we needed to merge it with another position. Um, and we did a, a lot of that so we didn't have to do layoffs. Uh, I continually do business uh, roundtables with our businesses in Harvard County so I can see what's going on with local businesses. And another thing we were finding out in 06, uh, uh, in 08, we would bring in <coughs> car dealers and they were talking about how car sales had dropped. Or we were bringing in other companies that were talking about they were laying people off. We knew our income tax would, would drop. So we really stay close to our businesses. This is actually Business Appreciation Week in Harvard County where I go around and tour probably anywhere from 40 to 50 businesses and just that are small or large, depending on uh, which ones I might get a chance to go to. I can tell you, I, I went to one business owned by a woman on Tuesday. She started out with a business in her basement two years, in 2006. She now has 200 employees. So, small business person, but uh, eventually this, all these tax rates and things like that are gonna you know, crush her. Uh, if you go out and buy a butterball turkey, I'll tell you this, that the tag is made in Harper County. They make a million of those tags every, every year. So uh, I'm amazed sometimes at what's going on. But we try to keep top contact with the businesses. And you know, I continually hear elected officials saying, jobs, 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 jobs. And I always tell people, you can shorten that to one word and take the S off, it's job, it's their job. That's all they're concerned about is their job and their re-election. Uh, that's all that Obama's concerned about now is his re-election. That's all that Malley was concerned about his re-election. My point is, government doesn't create jobs. They don't create real jobs. Our job is to stay out of the gut, do people's way, maybe assist them. What we do to help create jobs in Harper County is to assist businesses, to keep our taxes low, uh, to help them find out where land is that they can move to, where vacant offices are. We have somebody that works on inventory, help them with job training. Uh, we just had Wegmans move in, 550 jobs, 450 of those people live in Harper County. We help them do their workforce uh, <laughs> training to get people in. So those are the types of things that help where you hit local government is Plan Maryland, uh, the state attempting to continue to take over who owns land and what you can do with it. And a large argument with your county executive about this issue. Um, where his comment was, we're losing, this is what he said, because I was beating up on the state uh, secretary of uh, planning, Rich Hall, who was from Harper County, and I said, you know, we don't need this, and your county executive said, well, we're losing land. And I said, we're not losing land. Harper County still has 475 acres, like or square miles, like we had 200 years ago. It's just what's on top of the land is different. And he said, well, the state needs more control of that. I said, no, the taxpayer who owns it needs control over what goes on. Concerned about something going on in a piece of land, I said, "You don't want that there." Buy it yourself. Uh, I don't know if you heard yesterday. Uh, Peter Francho indicated that revenues are up, but the incredible part of that that got reported just a little bit less was that corporate taxes surprisingly were down. 
And I guess what I'm wondering is, are, is it your impression that we, as you just said, that we're just chasing the businesses out and that yes. it's going to just continue this way? Is there anything? It's interesting, uh, not only that, but the millionaire's tax that they did in, in Maryland. Uh, Ike Leggett, a staunch liberal Democrat, uh, county executive of Montgomery County, sat with me and, and told me that he lost, when they passed the millionaire's tax, the Montgomery County is pretty wealthy, they lost $250 million in income tax because most of these people that are pretty wealthy have a home somewhere else and all they did is switch whether they lived five months in Maryland, you know, six months in Maryland and five months somewhere else. And he said, he told me that one guy paid $1.5 million in property and in income tax and the guy no longer, quote, lives there anymore. Uh, so it's killing them, it's killing corporations. Now, when he says that revenues are coming in, it's interesting that papers are saying we have a surplus. No, we're still $500 million short. So they still, and that's just a one-time money, so that doesn't mean they've solved that $1.2 billion systemic problem that we have with the state budget that they all knew about before the budget, but they forgot about it. Do you see a, 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 a downward slide like that that eventually people are going to go, they're driving us crazy? Yes, you see in Baltimore like County all the time, people leave and they go to live in Delaware, they want to avoid income tax, you see it on Eastern Shore with business people that go to businesses and buy their you buy the refrigerator in Delaware so they don't have to pay the, the sales tax on it. And you see people leaving all the time to do that. I, I guess I meant more of the, the average voter waking up and going, wait a minute, that oh. business I used to go to is gone, my brother's <coughs> job is gone, my wife's job is gone, you know, I've got to pay more in all this. They wake up and vote correctly? <laughs> I hope so. It's our job to make sure they do. That's kind of stay involved. To make but sure I mean, you see do. a point where that will occur now in the future? It's up, to, it's up to clubs like this, or like the officials like Alan and I to make sure it happens. Could you share some information on the classes that you're uh, Oh, yes. Uh, I started running for office in 1979. I've been in 20 different elections, city, county, state elections. Um, been to the national conference twice. So um, I feel it's an obligation to help other people who want to run for office or help other people run for office. So we are doing a class, uh, eight different classes. We're going out. Actually, Ted Pibble is with me tonight as one of the people who speaks. These are all-day classes on Saturdays. The first one we did was two weeks ago in Harvard County. Uh, we had about 40 people attend. So it's all day from 8.30 until 5. Uh, we teach people about fundraising, about the media work. Um, it's not just designed for the candidates. It's designed also for maybe your finance chair or your campaign chair. We actually had a, a man who's running for mayor of Laurel come up and brought his team up there and get some information. Uh, let's see, we're having, the next one's October 1st in Cambridge, so we're doing two on Eastern Shore. I think the nearest one here might be the one in Hagerstown. Silver Spring. Silver, there's one in Silver Spring, uh, too. So we're doing this from now through February, so about every three weeks we're doing a class. We have some professionals come in and speak. John Leopold and I we started off and just talk about what the real life is and do you really want to do this. Um, and then it's been very well received so far by people, and it's free. So. We're paying for it out of our campaign. The best horse probably this year will be Haverty Grace. You know, follows, that's where I'm from, but the female, the third year in a row, I think well, the best horse will be a, a uh, female horse. And uh, the owner lives in Wilmington, but he has a boat in Haverty Grace. Put your $2 down. <laughs> yeah. All right. Mr. Craig, I was just wondering if you teach that you teach that class in Harper County, if we could send our county executive up there. And you can <laughs> I will tell, we, That's a good we, thing. We did a little. We, we did a little thing in the Frederick County because they're thinking about going charter government, and his, he's sitting next to me, and, and he and I get along pretty well. Um, and he said, you know, somebody said, what's the job of the county executive? He said, you're supposed to be the cheerleader. So a little later on, a uh, guy looked at me and said, you know, you said the county executive is supposed to be the cheerleader, and I said, and, and Ken goes, no, no, no. He said, I said that, and I said, yeah, I think you should be the quarterback. <laughs> 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 